everybody, my name is Ruth Vega, and today I would like to share with you some critical concepts, especially one which is very important for me. But first of all, I would like to talk about a, a brief introduction about my topics. Uh, since we know that the culture influences the knowledge and the culture influences what the students are going to learn in a class, it is necessary for us to develop some strategies based on this culture. And this is a concern from the Ecuadorian government um, that the, all Ecuadorian teachers need to prepare and to improve the way of teaching. For that reason, teachers now are aware of this. These are my critical concepts uh, that I want to show you, but the most important for me is assessment. Why? Because in our daily practice, we need uh, to assess our students in a professional way. What, uh, uh, why, what, what, what I mean in a professional way is that we should put in practice uh, what is assessment. Not only to think that assessment is evaluation, because uh, actually assessment is not evaluation, it's not the same way. And sometimes we as teachers, we try to, we confuse about these two terms. Assessment is one thing, evaluation is another thing. Assessment is the process that we as teachers, we do in order to gather information, we collect information from our students. What kind of information? We have to see our students' performance in everyday class. We have to see and to observe how do they act, how do they uh, improve, how do they uh, perform different skills and different activities? And evaluation, on the other hand, is just a final process. In evaluation, we compare objectives with uh, goals. We compare what we plan and what, res what results do we have in the future. So in that way, in the evaluation, we try to <coughs> reflect if something worked or not. But in assessment, the main purpose is to know how are our students improving in their performance in everyday class. As you can see in this picture, we have <coughs> diagnostic assessment, which is before learning. We have formative assessment, which is during the learning. And at the end, we have summative assessment, which is after learning. So you can see here three kinds of assessments. One before, one during the year or the term, and one which is after the term. It could be after the week, it could be after the unit, or it could be after the month or the year. This is just a quotation about the formative assessment, which is an ongoing assessment, an assessment which is which takes place every day in every class. According to Herrera and Marvin, on the other hand, the summative assessment is just a final result, something which is applied at the end of a term. Another important thing that I consider it's really important to share, and sometimes um, we as teachers, we don't use it, and sometimes we use it, but it's necessary to know that rubrics play an important role in the assessment. Why? Because the rubrics are a tool that guides us in our everyday work. If we use rubrics, we are going to assess in a better professional way our students. For me, it is important to assess students because uh, we have an evidence we have opportunities to improve. We can give our students feedback. <coughs> we can uh, assess different skills. And we have, we can use the tools as a guide for us. We can have the validity tool. So, for me, it is important to share with you that in the assessment, we need to validate all of these facts in order to do a professional assessment based on the rules. 
As you can see briefly, this is a rubric for speaking. Sometimes we wonder, okay, I need to assess speaking, but how? How, how can I do this? So we can use a rubric and we can assess in the speaking, the grammar, the fluency, the communication, or the pronunciation. Um, we can assess listening too. We can assess portfolios with rubrics. On the internet, you can have a lot of rubrics for assessing different skills and different activities. You can have a rubric for writing too, and you can have a rubric for assessing critical thinking. So rubrics, to conclude, rubrics are very useful for assessing our students, our students professionally. As you can see here, in the assessment, the observation, the registering of information, the feedback, the rubric, the final grades, and the reflection, all of them are part of the assessment. Okay, now, to begin the class, I would like to let you know the objectives. The first objective, Monica, would you read it? Speaking, to talk about opinions based on factual evidence. Lady, could you read the second one? Reading, to recognize and differentiate between factual evidence and opinion from a reading passage. Fernando, could you read the other one? Writing, to write about facts and opinions about reading passage. Listening, uh, could you read please, Henry? To listen to opinions based on facts. Okay, so my dear students, uh, these are the objectives that today we are going to learn. Uh, today we are going to study, um, to read a reading passage about something that I know you like it so much, about music. Do you like hip hop? Yes. 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 Like hip hop. Yeah. So today we are going to read something very interesting about hip hop. But the most important thing is that you are going to critically think about what hip hop makes in society. Through these activities, we are going to work on a mind map, in the facts and opinion, and finally, you're going to read and then short, short information about the reading passage. So to, I, to activate what you already know, I would like you to, to work on this mind maps. I have two mind maps to activate your knowledge. You can use your pens, pencils, markers, um, ten students are going to work on this my map, and ten other students on that map. Uh, in the middle of the my map, you can observe a figure about the hip hop, hip hop music, and I would like you to write what you know about hip hop. Don't worry if maybe you think you write wrong. Don't worry about that. Just write what you know information about hip hop. Get up and do it. Type of music. Type of music. Um, Based on the streets. Okay, let's do it. Okay, students. <laughs> So you are activating what you already know about hip hop. Hip hop. Very nice one. Eminem. Anything. Eminem. Okay. Anything huh? you know Eminem about hip hop? Yeah. No, no. He's a Daddy rapper. Jam. Okay, students. Can you take it, please? It's over. You have to take it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Paper for each pair of schools, right? 
Together or excuse me? Are we being aloud loud or Yes, two? not together. You have to read together, not aloud, in pairs. Okay. Maybe this is a pack. What do you think? I think it's an idea. Okay. okay. Try to get facts. Two or three facts. Try to get first. Yes. Try to write write the facts in the sticky notes. For those students who don't know about the fact, the fact is the information presented in the reading. One information is the reading, but even what happens. Information from the readings. Okay. Now, pay attention please, students. In this orange sticky note, I would like you to write your opinion about the reading. Because one thing is the fact and one thing is the opinion. First, you identify the facts, which is the information from the reading. And then in this sticky, in orange sticky note, you're going to write your opinion about the fact. No, just two. Just one opinion. Okay, so these are many opinions. Because this strategy is called three facts and one opinion. Our right. opinion or yes. opinion about this? Our opinions or their opinions? Personal opinion. Your opinion about this. So, I don't think it's a good I don't think. One opinion? Those kind of music are bad because and they, they contain uh, uh, meaningful or they contain some meanings that they influence over the yeah. okay. Who needs help? Is it easy? Did you identify the facts? Yes. yes. Right. Very good. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, pay attention, please. Okay. Did you identify the facts? Yes. yes. Was it easy or a little difficult? Uh, a little bit more. Okay, and the opinion? Yes. Easy, yes. right? So I would like you to, um, to know this. Uh, a fact is information or events. What happens in the reading? What is stated in the reading? And an opinion is what you think. What, in your opinion, what do you think about that? Okay, um, Fabi, uh, tell please, tell us your first fact. 
about their being. My first time. Songs affect the behavior of young people. Okay. Um, Damia, could you share with us another fact? Yes. From the reading? Uh, they are afraid about drugs, sex, and violence. Okay, good. Roberto, would you like to share with us another fact? Uh, I think the other fact is the one related with music. Um, they say that music with violent lyrics is the reason so young people commit crimes. Okay, thank you very much. Now, uh, the first, the main objective of this class is to differentiate what is a fact and what is an opinion. Fact is information from the reading which is true, and opinion is what you think about it. That's right? Okay. So, this is the last part of the class. This is in the affirmation stage, the students have to share with their parents what do they think about that. What do they think about the reading? Then they can share with other faiths. That is the final activation of this class. Thank you very much.